Hi, I'm Erica Mendes. I'm a voice actor, as all these other people are, so I guess that was dumb to say. Um, I'm from LA. That's something different about me, right? Um, I'm in Kill Kill as Ryuko Matsue. I'm in Sailor Moon as Sailor Uranus. I'm in Sword Art as Yuki Kono. Yay! And a whole bunch of other stuff. What about video games? Vi oh, this is a video yeah. game panel! It is. Oh my oh. god. Hi. Get out. <laughs> just Hi just guys, I'm you Erica. You screwed up your whole introduction. Okay, start, wait, wait, wait. wait are, you, are you a voice actor? I'm a voice actor. Where are you from? Los Angeles. But what do you, what do you, what do you voice? Not in anime because this is a voice acting panel. <laughs> but the video game, play, play, play. I'm in Danganronpa, another episode as Nagisa Shingetsu. Wee. I am Say in. Say that five times fast. No. Um, <laughs> I am in Fairy Fencer F as Aaron. Um, and stuff. It's early for me still. I know we're three LA hours time. behind. <laughs> I'm also from LA. Yay! Um, yay, LA! Hi, if you're waving to me. Oh, water. Do people want waters? Yes. Okay. Is it room temperature? No. no. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Lauren Landa. I've you been totally in a lied. It is totally this games. room's temperature. You just <laughs> ruined my introduction, I'm Josh. Sorry. I'm sorry, Lauren. Jeez. I'll take one. Yeah, thank you so much. Water break. So let me start again because Josh screwed it up. <laughs> he works in sound for a living and he just put his microphone on top of a plastic bag. <laughs> Uh, I'm Lauren Land. I've done uh, a bunch of video games, actually. I've been in, uh, I was Lychee Failing in Blaze Blue. I was Kasumi in Dead or Alive 5. I was Leia in Tales of Exilia and Tales of Exilia 2 with Mr. Josh Greeley. And then, um, uh, should I totally call you out right now? Should I? And there's Ian Sinclair! <laughs> Ian, come join us. Come join us. Hi, I'm nice in the you. channel and he got a, like, a huge You can applause. sit on Rob's lap. Uh, let's see who. He was not listed on the video game actually. He wasn't, so he's totally crashing. One eyed Eric says hi. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of who else. There's, there's been a, a ton. Um, oh, I was one in Dragon Guard three, which was a lot of fun. Uh, I was Eo in, uh, in Devil Survivor two. Huh? No, I had. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Erica. We just talked. I was also female Robin in Fire Emblem Awakening Woo! and Smash Brothers. Me uh, n I was gonna say Melee, Smash <laughs> Smash Brothers. Yeah, that that one video game. Hi, Rob. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I, can it reach? Can it can reach. Hold on. I think Jeez. Brianna is worried that I'm uh, not where I'm, I'm supposed to be, and I need to let her know that I'm here because she's being really conscientious. Um, Are you handling? Yeah. Where's Rob? I'm here. <laughs> Yes. Um, hi, I'm Rob McCollum. Hi, uh, I'm uh, Rob McCollum. Uh, I've done games going back for a long time ago. I think one of the ones I'm most proud of, it doesn't really count as a video game, but I was, I was one of the voices in Bop It 2. <laughs> Twist it! Flick it! Bop it! Um, the one that was shaped like a boomerang. Not the, no, the first, yeah, yeah. Um, Allison Victor Victorian is also in that too. Um, the uh, the I uh, Borderlands Two. I played Axton. Uh, orcs must die. I don't know if you're familiar with Orcs must die. The Warge Orcs must die. The Warge they have must. To die. Orcs must they gotta, die. They gotta die. And it's kind of a real similar voice to Axton. If anyone's a looking for similarities there. Uh, and Band of Brothers, something a long time ago. Oh God, anyway, yeah. way back. Uh, yeah, that was me. Sarah. Yay! <laughs> I forgot to mention Squiggly and Skullgirls. Hi, Sarah. I'm Annie and Skullgirls. That's, yeah. Yay. You're terrible <laughs> people. Go, Sarah. <laughs> and segue to Sarah, who is also in. You're only in one place. Shh. Go, Sarah, go. <laughs> That's terrible. Two, technically. Wait. Yeah. Introduce yourself, Sarah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that. Sorry, I was thinking about that scene, though. It was really good. I was watching it. it Introduce was... yourself, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was watching the playthrough Sarah. of Beowulf and thinking, oh my God, Annie sounds so good. Sarah. Thank you. Yes, Introduce I am. yourself. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> I am Sarah Wolf. <laughs> Hi, Sarah Wolf. <laughs> Hi, Sarah Wolf. <laughs> 
Hi, I, um, I'm uh, Peacock and Skullgirls. Um, Jinx in League of Legends. Yes. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, Shallot in uh, Atelier Shally. And uh, Uni in like every single Neptunia game that ever includes her. I'm come back. Love that fact. Yeah. I'm, yeah, you're Cave, right? Cave. Cave? Just Cave? Cave. She has the coolest attack in the entire game. It kills me. The bullet hell. Have you seen it? Do you, do you expect me to remember this? I don't remember. No, no. It's but have you seen? Have you seen it? You because it's just cool. It's it's a she's a bullet hell game. So she makes a bullet hell. And I it's have kind not of great. seen this. I will have to. It's kind of hilarious. Anyway. I'm done rambling. <laughs> Hi, I'm Josh Greeley. Hi, uh, Josh. Uh, I'm very cold. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little chilly in this here. Is, this is apparently to keep the acting fresh, you know. Uh, it's a me locker joke. You totally, he was right there. He was on top of the play. Uh, let's see, video games. Uh, I play, uh, I'm Sumashir in Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8. Uh, yeah! Uh, I'm Luger Will Kresnick in Tales of Zelia 2 with this lovely lady over here. And he sounds awesome! I love it, you know, I'm, I had 25 hours of going, <laughs> so, <laughs> Words of wisdom from Luger. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, Demi Graw in uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse. I was also in uh, Dragon Ball Budokai, uh, Ultimate Budokai Tenkaichi, and all the other Japanese words that I can come up with, you know, just throw it out there. Uh, Shibalonke and several other characters in Smite. Uh, I'm also in Orcs Must Die. Uh, there was, what was it, Gunslinger? There was like, what was that game for the Xbox we did it? Like, Three or four years ago, like Spaghetti Western Gunslinger, or whatever it was. Uh, orcs Must Die. Yeah, Orcs Must Die with fun. And uh, some Borderlands, too. Some Borderlands and other little fun things. Who are you? I'm Ian. Hi, Ian. Hi. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Video games. Uh, there's one I really want to talk about because they've technically released a clip of my voice, but I'm not technically allowed to talk about it. So, ha ha, tease. Um, You're a terrible person. Oh, yeah, I know. I hate spoilers, so I can't do that. And legally, the, like, the director who was even, this might give you a hint of who it is, was like, don't even tell people you worked with me. That guy. Um, no, because he knows that they'd be like, ah, you're in the next ball game. Anyway, um, Montana in Battleborn, which is coming out. I'm in Orcs Must Die. Uh, in Borderlands, I was Baron Flint. In Borderlands 2, I was Jimbo Hodunk and Professor Nakayama. Uh, I'm Whis in all of the Dragon Ball games since the Dragon Can Ball game. Can I just game. say, I want to cut you off, Ian. Please. He was amazing as Whis. I loved oh, you, you as Whis. Oh, thank you. I am a huge Dragon Ball fan, and Whis like was... Weiss. Freaking awesome character. Lisa's is fun. <laughs> That's what all of the Saiyans say when that are far less powerful than me. Um, and then I was one of the custom voices in whatever that thing. Didn't you just announce a Tales game too? Okay. I yeah. did. Ah. Tales of Zesteria. Yeah. Zavid. Why did you not see me when you were in LA, Ian? Dude, that weekend. Okay, so I was supposed to fly out. Story time. No, I was just, I had to fly out. Like, like It was one of those, like, get okay. there in the morning, then, like, work, and then, like, cry into Matt Mercer's arms. And Matt yes. Mercer <laughs> is it very happens. sad that he can't be here. He texted me. He's throwing up, like, now. So, oh. like, food poisoning. Send him your love. He's a great guy. Poor Matt. Oh. <laughs> Tell me you have, like, a pocket full of coins and sudden, like, in case someone bumps into you. Dude, I will give you money to get changed to do this. Just throw it when you fall down. Um, what else? Uh, we do, I don't know. The games that we do in Dallas. We do games in Dallas. Smite. Oh, yeah. I'm all over Smite. Um, Tear and all of his side tearings. And then Elvis guy. I don't know. Stuff. Stuff. Is this a Q&A? Yes. Is it? Okay. I don't know. What's your, what's your Q now that we've gone through everybody? Okay, um, I know at least uh, most of you, you, you guys are awesome uh, voice actors. Um, I was wondering, most of us. Uh, I'm not going to say who I don't know. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, thank you. I was wondering, uh, who, uh, do you guys have any uh, major inspirations for acting or any actors who are like, really important to you growing up? Oh, growing up? Okay. Well, we had to talk to you back. 
Yeah. Growing up, I mean, I had many different inspirations, but most recently I was reminded, and a lot of people don't know this, but I was reminded actually of how talented Brad Dorif is. Does anybody know who Brad Dorif is? He's the voice of Chucky. <clears throat> The killer doll, Chucky. But a lot of people don't remember that he was in this amazing movie uh, called One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And he was absolutely an amazing, an amazing character. And he is so talented. He was also, what's his, na what's his name? In, you just mentioned, yes, in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. The gothic looking guy. Anyway, he is, he's an amazing actor. And yeah, he was. The kings, when the king's like possessed. Yeah, he's like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, don't trust him. Grim that dude, worm yeah. Top? Anyway, yeah, worm top. he was, he's, he's an amazing actor. He's definitely an inspiration. Um, there were many other, you know, as vo far as voice <coughs> actors go, uh, Jim Cummings, obviously. Um, uh, uh, let's see, Keith David, who is Goliath in Gargoyles. I think he's amazing. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot. Did somebody throw out a name? Anybody? Mark Hamill. Yeah, Mark Hamill. Well, of course, Mark uh, Hamill. Mark yes, Hamill. Frank Wilkins. Anthony Heald was a big influence for me growing up. Blank, uh, he did yes. a whole lot of uh, audio books that I, I loved growing up listening to whenever we would travel around the country and stuff for my dad's art shows. We were just talking about this last weekend because we were also at another con last weekend. Yeah. Um, we were talking about how uh, she hasn't done a lot of voiceover, but Kate Mulgrew is yeah. amazing. Uh, she was... Uh, what. Oh, she was, she was Queen Captain, Titania. Yeah, Queen Titania in Gargoyles. Gargoyles. For those, like, she was Captain Janeway in Captain Star Trek Janeway. Voyager. Like, if oh my God, if you don't know who Kate Mulgrew is, get out, please. <laughs> please. Yeah. No, stay, stay. <laughs> This is half the reason I love Gargoyles yeah, as a kid for because half the cast of Next Generation and a good portion of like Voyager was on yep, it, and I'm just yep. like, Data is Puck. It was so nice, mm -hmm. Yeah. I will say, in terms of figuring out like voices and the the roles that voices play in early storytelling, for me, the Muppets. Yeah, yeah, the Muppets. Were huge, and I mean, puppetry is a huge part of that. But real, like Frank Oz and and but kind of all of them, and then Animaniacs. Yeah, yeah. was the first. Yeah, uh, was one of the first ones where I remember thinking of the voices separate from the the whole. Like as my young mind working out, like oh, there's somebody doing that, separate from the from the big picture. What about Mel Blanc? Uh, that was, but see, in my mind, it was that was still just those cartoons yeah. were so tied to him, and he was in all of them. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I think it didn't real. It didn't. That was just what Mel Blanc did. It wasn't like what Mere Mortals did. It's true. Like that yeah, there were other people true. that could have that job. I think Animaniacs was when that when that penny dropped, um, and then. Uh, I remember Bugsy Malone is a terrible musical movie that you should all see, starring Scott Baio. And uh, yeah, no, musical uh, and Jodie Foster and Scott Baio doing gangster as 12 year olds. Uh, all right. But I was like, oh, kids get paid to act. That's a thing That's people can do. And that was a, another moment of like, oh, acting is a job, not just a, yeah. like, Clearly, that's not a gangster from the 20s. That's a modern-day kid who was paid to be in a movie. You can do that. I'm, I was five. Okay. I'm not a smart kid, but it, it, <laughs> it happened. That's why we're actors. All right. <laughs> that's why we're actors. We're not smart. Yeah, I mean... No it's, it's, actually, funny story. I, I, his name is, is totally escaping my brain right now, but I actually met the actor who played Wacko in a Vons. Yeah, in a Vons randomly. We were in the same line. LA, it happens. Um, we were in the line and we were in the line and he has a very certain fashion like uh, all the time like I think it's like a cowboy hat and like b bell bottoms and like always like suit jackets or something but looks like it, a rock star yeah totally looks like a rock star and so I recognized him and and I was like okay I could ask him or I could make myself look like an idiot excuse me um are you it's gonna be a random question are you the voice of wacko he's like yeah yeah I'm like oh that's awesome so I met him at Vons. It was really cool, and he was a very sweet guy. Yay. Anybody else a big fan growing up of the Spider-Man animated series? <laughs> I, for I forgot to, I forgot to bring... Eric I was going to bring my copy of Shattered Dimensions and be that person, because... I'm going to do... I'm that was my... 
That was my soap opera growing up. Uh-huh. That was my soap opera. Yeah. I was like, I was like, is him and Mary Jane gonna get together? Or is him and Mary Jane gonna get together? Uh-huh. What's happening? No! Ian, he's hiding behind the couch. Pop oh quiz. God. You know who played Venom in that? Um, um, um. Oh. Huge voice actor. I know, I know. Oh, damn. Hank Azaria. What? Yeah. Really? He played Venom. Spider-Man. And he's got that sort of, you know, uh, most is like, oh, freaking Spider-Man. I love it. I love Pop Hank quiz Azaria. number two. Do oh, you know yeah, who Hank played? Azaria. Definitely Hank Azaria. He's amazing. Pop quiz number two. Do you know who played Green Goblin? And that. Mark Hamill. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait. Yeah, he no. played the Hobgoblin, not the Green no, yeah, Goblin. He, yeah, you're right. He was Hobgoblin. Yeah, he was Hobgoblin. He was. Uh, yeah, good call. Good call. Good call. Way to go. Give me, don't leave me hanging. Let me go. Did Green Goblin make an appearance? Because yes, it was his, yes, yeah, yeah. Because so the once the Harry the Harry stuff started up, yeah. his dad did do the change to uh, yeah. Green Goblin, and then you know Harry took right. over and right. And uh, yeah, that. Can we, another, can we let him ask another question? Oh, I did, well, you didn't. You didn't. Sorry, we could ramble on. You didn't what answer. about you, Edgar? Did you? You didn't. We in YouTube we didn't answer either. Oh, Everyone. Everyone. We all threw out Everyone. stuff. Everyone. Everyone. Uh, Everyone. Like June Foray, Tress McNeil, like even more current people like Kari Walgren and you know, people like that. That yeah, Kari's great gotten a chance to meet and some people I've gotten to work with and it's just yeah everybody inspires me I'm just always inspired by things Mark Thompson is another really good one if, if you've ever seen any of his stuff he, he, he's he been uh, I think one of his first big anime appearances was in Yu-Gi-Oh Dungeon the Dungeon Dice Monsters like he was the Dungeon Dice Monsters dude was but dude. like like yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Slayers, a whole bunch of other stuff. But like, if if you want to see like just truly amazing vocal work, go and get any of the most like the recent Star Wars audiobooks and listen to that dude. Like he narrates all of the unabridged ones. It's like fourteen hours plus for these things. No two characters sound the same. It's amazing. What's his name again? Mark Thompson. Okay. So what's your next question? Um, if you had another, go- oh, no, no, are you no, next? No, no, no. You're next. Uh, this this more of a this more of a general question, but uh, you've all, you've all been in in at least at least one or two JRPGs uh, more for uh, was was Tales of the Steel your first JRPG? I guess. Yeah. Sure. Uh, no, I, just, <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember stuff. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask more of what do you what do you think of the genre as a whole regarding the various JRPGs? Like um, Erica has been in. Fairy Fencer F is Aaron, which one of my favorite roles of yours. I I, I had watched um, I had watched of course Kill the Kill and yeah. uh, and Yuki Yuna, but when I heard Aaron, I was like, wow, I had no idea Erica could sound this cute. <laughs> um, Acting. But, Erica's always cute. <laughs> okay. Um, but I just what what are your thoughts on the genre as a whole, even how even with how varied it can be. I, I would be happy with a lot less grinding, <laughs> yeah. but other than that, generally I've always been very entertained. Like the Final Fantasy series was one of my first, you know, JRPGs. And, you know, and a Super Mario RPG. You know, Square Enix did too way back when. Yeah. Uh, like great story. Like that's the that's the the reason you play them. It's you're playing a story, and it's it's really cool to be able to get to experience this and 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 con- basically control and contribute to this story. That's always been one of the big draws for me. How about you? Grinding is my zen state. <laughs> That's how I meditate. I remember doing that in high school when Final Fantasy X came out. I just get it. I come home after school, put on some, put on some j- Japanese pop music, whatever I was listening to, and start grinding in the Omega Dungeon for just hours. I, okay, what does grinding mean? It just means you take your characters out and you kill the monsters over and over oh, and over and up. over. Yeah, to level up. Oh, yeah. I hate that. Sorry. That's a zen state. That's where I yeah, meditate. Go, go into a cave, kill a bunch of, I don't know, rats for an hour. And they give you money. And they give you money. And then you're like better off by the end of it. And you kind of zone out anyway. Yeah, it's true. Like, you definitely put some, zone mu- out. put some music on. Just meditate. Just yeah. like blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. And that's why I always failed at Final Fantasy games because I hated leveling up and... In Final Fantasy, you have to level up. Otherwise, you you lose and you don't get the secret special ending or the 100%, <laughs> whatever it was. And I, I just remember in... I haven't even finished. I started Final Fantasy XII and Ooh. I got to don't the part where he's... One. Don't finish that don't one? Don't finish that one. There okay. are better Final Fantasies than twelve. But I mean, it my has twelve ball here. My first one was, my first one was eight. So, and which I think is actually a very good, I like it. It is my favorite. Awesome. 
Yeah, eight British was my first eight. one. It's still I've my had favorite. Yeah, eight so three good. times now. Six and I is still really can't good. Do does does Kingdom Hearts count as yeah. JRPG? Oh, yeah. yeah, it does. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, I love Kingdom Hearts. I I love. I thought I thought it was a good concept. A lot of people are like, I think it's stupid. I'm like, how? How can you think it's stupid? It's Everybody awesome. that thought it was stupid is totally waiting for Kingdom Hearts three to come out. <laughs> and it's also Kingdom stupid. Hearts, Kingdom Hearts didn't really, at least the way it didn't feel like it was grindy. No, it, like it wasn't no. really grindy at all. And it like I loved the action gameplay and the combat system. It was like very, it was intuitive. It was very easy, and it was fun. I mean, you didn't have to go into a cave and kill rats did for ever, three hours. Did you ever beat Sephiroth? Yeah. yeah. Really? Oh yeah. I, never I did that on hard mode. <laughs> You just yep. gotta time your potions. Just, your just potions. Rub right. it in, Sarah. It's all good. Just <laughs> rub it in. <laughs> um, um, JRPG. Yeah. As as for me, like Don't for she's I don't even know how long, but uh, it, JRPGs was kind of like the way me and my cousin used to bond. So he I'd go. He'd never let me play them, but I would go over to his house and he'd like play uh, Chrono Trigger. Ooh. And I'd watch him play Chrono Trigger, and then I finally got to play Chrono Trigger, and I'm like, this is the best game ever. <laughs> and uh, he actually introduced me to the Final Fantasy series, and um, so when he wasn't, he, w- he would stay at my, my house, uh, I forget why, but at one point he, he was living at my house with me and my parents, and he left his games there, and when he wasn't home, I played his games, because he wouldn't let me otherwise. So I played Final Fantasy VIII and hated it, because I couldn't beat Ephraim. Oh. <laughs> and then I went back, and I was like, I finally beat it, and I was like, oh my god, this is the best game ever, and then I marathoned it, and I've probably beaten it like three times since then. Um, so Final Fantasy is like uh, amazing to me. I love a lot of the games that I've played. Um, so being in JRPGs, which is you know a lot of the genre that I play lately, is just amazing. Uh, actually, I forgot to mention, I'm in Disgaea 5, and I just got Disgaea 5. Uh. And those games are fun. So just, yeah, be, I think, I want to say... No, Fairy Fencer wasn't my first. I think maybe it was Atelier oh. Esque and Logi, I think I was no, in. No, Demon Gaze. Was no, that wasn't my first oh, one. Oh, that wasn't your first? Oh, okay. No, but I was in that one, too. I, I, I really know, like liked I Dragon Guard 3. was really cool. It was, it was really pretty. It was also by Square Enix, and I, I haven't played it, but um, I've watched a few of the cutscenes. and a uh, game. It's very pretty. Um, I do a lot of fighting games. I've done a lot of fighting games. Uh, I have never screamed so much as I did in Dragon Guard 3, and I had an absolute blast doing it. I was, of course, you know, my voice was gone by the end of the session, but it was awesome. I had, I had a fun time with it, and it's pretty. So what about you, Rob? Uh, I'm a fan just because it's, it's the storytelling side of it, mm-hmm. which is what, I mean, I, mean I, I try to claim to be a writer and all those kind of things. So any game that is more than just the... Any game that is more than just the, the action of it, but the story that goes along with it. And, you know, when, when I was young, before these people were born, we had choose-your-own-adventure books that you got at school. I remember we, those. I used to read those. They were antiques when you bought them. They were They new. were not. Those bumps were not antiques. Um, no, but, like, and, and that's kind of the, the fruition of are. that storytelling style is now these, these games, and I think it's kind of, it's, it's amazing. So, yeah, I'm a fan. We approve. <laughs> Thanks for your question, man. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I just want to say that um, for a personal question, um, for you, uh, Lauren Linda, mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. Uh, the thing is, I really love Female Robin because oh. I'm really encouraged to play and play Super Smash Bros. Oh, awesome. Thank you. I love the voice, the costume, and I just want to ask you a question, though. Like, uh-huh. Um, do you think you could perform your voice of Fimo Robin? Uh, the, oh, I only remember one line. <laughs> One line. That's that's all I remember, and and that I actually had to have. We were just talking about this. Uh, I only remember one line. Is that okay? Yeah, sure, no problem. <clears throat> oh god, I'm a little I'm a little under the weather, so I'm sorry. It's not going to sound exactly the same. Time to tip the scales. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello. We just have a request for Sarah. Okay. <laughs> if you can do your laugh for Jinx. Ooh, yeah, do it. Do it for 10 hours. Do it. Ten dance, time. monkey, do it. dance. Time. Press control four and just leave the, leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ready for this shit. I'm getting ready for this shit. <laughs> Pardon me, that's not plus 18 word to be saying. <laughs> My bad. Oh, man. We're all adults here. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> 
Look at Ian, he's on his phone. He's not an adult. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, the laugh you said? Yes. Oh, goody. <laughs> Excuse me if I pass out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just hit the thing with my teeth. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. Yay! I meant to go longer and then I went. I got some teeth. Uh, I'm hard with the mic. <laughs> <Wait a minute. laughs> <laughs> Hello. So, uh, with the guys that worked on Borderlands 2, yes. like, how messed up was it, like, reading the scripts and just going, like, how out to, off, sure, like, off the wall and crazy that some of the scenes were, like, like uh, did you have, like, any expectations or were, like, you completely floored by a lot of the stuff? Well, Josh and I did less than Rob, so we'll cover our stuff quickly. Um, pure joy. Uh, it was awesome. Eric Vale was an amazing director. Uh, I had tons of fun doing a guy with gibberish because I would just kind of go, blah, 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 and then Eric would say, like, I ate a pillow one time into my ear, and I'd be like, blah, 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 I ate a pillow one time. And that's amazing and fun. Um, the, the, ha the Professor Nakayama was really fun because I really do think Handsome Jack as a character is freaking amazing. Yes. So to be like, oh my god, Handsome Jack, I, I want a tattoo of him on my everywhere. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And that is like evil Stewie. Stewie. It was a little really evil Stewie. Um, and so that was fun. And uh, everybody who was working on it was amazing. And it was a really cool thing. And all of us Dallas actors got together and did it. And it was a lot of fun. And I really like Borderlands. And it was a little. Like, what he said. <laughs> no, like, it, 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 because so much of what we do, especially in Dallas, you know, a lot of us work for Funimation, and a lot of what we do is, is just is anime, uh, we don't necessarily get to do a lot of prelay style recording, and Borderlands was that. It, like, there was nothing pre-animated, there was nothing that we had to match mouth movements to or whatever, it was just have fun. You just know, it was like real acting. Yeah. Like some like, other people do. And like, getting to play Dave, you know, this is the most misogynistic, character that I've ever played and everyone loves to kill him and he has a great death too. I love that guy. And just all the little bit parts and all the little pop culture references that we could throw out there. And, and the fact that we were working in, in a thing that, again, wasn't already made. So if we wanted to throw something out there and just have fun with it, if they liked it, they were like, no, no, run with that. Let's see if we can, you know, let's change the character up a little bit. That like the writer was there and they were like, no, I like that better. Let's, let's try this. And like, you really got to be part of the creative process. Yeah, and in a, lot of, in a lot of work environments, you go in and they have, like, we have down to the bite how much data we have for each phrase, and you need to say it exactly this, this word in this amount of time, because we know how much space is in the game memory-wise. This one was like, no, we're just having fun. I'll come up with three or four things, and you come up with three or four things, and, and so sometimes you wouldn't even know what made the game. Like, you'd have to go listen through and play it, or listen to the cutscenes that people have kindly put on the internet. And um, Something that you said that I want to kind of bound off of you, because you say like, oh, we're like doing real acting. The thing is, is that, I, and I've heard somebody say this, and I've kept it with me uh, for a long time, working for anime and dub, and especially with how hardcore Funimation is about the flaps, it's kind of like how Goku trains with weights on. It's the same thing for us, because we have to, they'd be like, cool, be a full-fledged character, be a fully-fledged out everything, and have like all these choices and everything, but do it half a second faster. Okay, now do that, but put a, put a pause in between these two words where there is no reason for there to be an English pause. And in between. don't sound like Speed Racer. And don't sound like Speed Racer and don't sound like William Shatner. And like, so <laughs> because of that, when those weights are taken off, you hear people like Rob and Josh and everybody just really go crazy and be able to really kind of breathe. And, and, and so that was, that was really neat for us. And yeah, and that was that was what my my journey with Borderlands Two was a little different because I was originally brought in to do Handsome Jack. Ooh. Yes, and he was ridiculous. They wanted him to be a doofus, like not bad, but not successfully evil. He was incompetent in the first version of it. He was kind of bumbling, like, "Where is my cape? Why why are you looking at me?" It was that, but not really scary. And then they kind of rethought it, like, no, we want to make him a real badass. And I'm like, sweet. And they're like, so we're going to bring in somebody else. And I'm like, what? No. <laughs> That's not what you told. I was doing what you told me. to. I can do that. Uh, and so I thought I was out. And then I got a call, like, a month later, like, we want you to be one of the playable characters. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. 
<laughs> That's good. And then what he did with Handsome Jack was pretty freaking amazing. It's so, just Damien, yeah. man. It's just Damien being Damien, and he was really good. At I got it. to meet him like two weeks ago. Have you not met him before? No, he is like Eric <laughs> without filters. He was back in the day part of the Dallas crowd, and then he moved out to, uh, to L.A. Uh, and is it... Yes, yeah. join the dark side. No, but yeah, the, the so. cool thing also was that, uh, I don't know if you've ever, there, there are compilations of it online, but if you don't play your characters, there's the whole track of what we say to you if you leave us alone for long periods of time. Those are completely unscripted. Oh, that's awesome. They would just let us go for like 30 minutes in the booth, just saying whatever. <laughs> and some of the most fun stuff I've gotten to do, if you just leave Axton alone for a long period of time, it's, it's the most fun stuff I've gotten to do. So I love it. They were they were incredibly open to to changing things um, and just like first of all um, you know Ellie yeah. Ellie was going to have like three heads and be a giant Amazon with giant guns and like a giant wrench and everything like that but Jamie Markey came in and did Ellie and they went oh, 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 I've got another idea and then they made Ellie um, my death as Professor Nakayama was a split second they were like okay cool we're gonna have this huge robot fight wait what if and I'm not going to ruin it because it's hilarious. Um, and then they just came up with this other thing and we just did it. And they had planned it and had to go back to all the people and be like, hey, we're redoing everything. Because for them, it was whatever's funniest. Whatever. <laughs> and that is amazing. Anticlimactic, but hilarious. I was like, oh, can I do that? Oh, can I do that? Like, yeah. I'm like, ah. So that's my, yeah, I'm not going to ruin it. I love it. Ian, I love so, you. It's so you're good. Just, I just love you. You're just fantastic. It has been too long. I know, too too long. Thank you guys. We go Thank party. You Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Man with massive key. Speaking of Kingdom Hearts. Foxhound. Yes. I take it you know your stuff. Yes. <laughs> Some do. <laughs> it, well, I gotta say, it it really is nice to meet you all. And I will admit, my knowledge of anime is basically amateur. However, I have been watching Toonami, nice. so I am aware of Kill a Kill, Sailor Moon, Borderlands, <laughs> and I'm pretty much a die-hard gamer. I even Good. play most to every game on the hardest difficulty. Nice. nice. Right on, dude. Now, my question is, what, what do you, what exactly does it take to be part of the voice acting industry? Be an actor first. Obviously. Take theater classes. Theater classes, theater is very important. It trains you for pretty much almost everything. Mm -hmm. Improv. Mm -hmm. Live in the market is a huge one. Because you could be the best damn voice actor in all of Florida, 100%. No one can even touch you. If you're not in the states that are doing it, you're not going to do it. Yeah. So there, you kind of got to be a, where the work it's is. A, it's a fairly small world in terms of, of where the studios are. And it's not necessarily fair. And L.A., uh, the studios are there because the town is there. The other places are just where the studios happen to be, and whoever happens to be an actor in that market gets the chance. Yep. I mean, the reason that so many anime actors are in Dallas is because Funimation moved to Dallas, because it's a right-to-work state, and they didn't have to pay any residuals, so they moved to Dallas. <laughs> um, and so that benefited the actors that were, were there. But the other thing is, he, you know, he talked about it, it's incredibly technical, it's work with a microphone, it's work in a very small time constraints, so you kind of have to be an actor first and then figure out the microphone stuff. The people that are good technically but never got around to getting on a stage or having an acting class or sometimes having an improv class, struggle, because it's not just technical. You have to be able to do all the technical stuff and in a really short amount of time, you don't have time to figure out a lot of things, but you have to make some real choices quick, so we always tell people acting first. Rob and I met doing theater. It's true. As much as you know, we, we love what we do. I would also say, don't you know? It's also it's pretty much what Rob just said. But you don't limit yourself to just wanting to be a voice actor. Again, being an actor first. That includes everything. That includes <coughs> uh, theater, radio, film, and television. Uh, just everything. So I people will always say, well, I, I just want to do voice acting for for anime. That's all I want to do. Well. Uh, I wish you the best of luck, but that's pretty hard to do because the anime industry is actually pretty small compared to other industries. And it's also very difficult to be a part of it. There's a lot of competition. There's a lot of, you know, it's, real, it's reality pretty much. But I would recommend, again, just being an actor first. And theater really does train you for so much. And so does improv. Paper, rock, scissors. 
<laughs> you go. Okay, so uh, on that, one of the best things I've heard somebody say is about, like, don't just specialize in it. I mean, Rob and I, um, I, I have been doing commercials, and we and, and Josh, too, we're all within the same agency and do commercials and all that. That's how you make uh, your daily life. Um, but I heard somebody say, going into voice acting and saying, as far as being a voice actor, I only want to work for anime, is like saying, okay, I want to go to architecture school, and I want to be an architect, but I'm just going to design doorknobs. That's amazing. So, like, like, it, because I mean, you'll get work selling doorknobs, but I mean, you gotta, you gotta build the rest of it to be able to, like, you know, I mean, you want to be in video games too, right? You want to do all of that, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So not also, just anime, all of it. Learn all of it, and if you want to make that side money, learn how to do commercials, because that's uh, I will get paid more doing one half hour commercial session than I will being a lead in a three season show. True. True, sir. Yep. I was just gonna say, don't be a chef who only cooks rice. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, the same. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, rock on. Thank you. Do you have something to add to that? Well, Do you have something to add? Well, it really no, is an honor to meet you all. Oh, yeah. thank nice you so you much. Too. Thank you. Good question. All right, next question. You are the only fleshlings that I will spare. Uh, and I will <laughs> conquer this world. <laughs> thank you. Someone say yes, Keyblade. Even people can't have Keyblades unless there's Aeonor. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, good sir, again. <laughs> um, I asked my general question. This is more of a, um, of a specific one for, for Sarah and Erica. Uh, there have been recently released some um, Yuki Yuna games. If, uh, I, the, and I wanted to, if, even though there's probably, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be too optimistic about the chance of them coming here, but would you, would you want to be a part of those if they ever came here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I ask like us. working. <laughs> um, but the, I mean, that series was fun. It was short, but I still I wait like for them to dub the Sword Art games. Oh, they're never gonna do that. Like, what, what happened with that? You're bringing out a fourth one and Ser everything. Seriously, Bamco. I know. Um, but yeah, uh, what what were your thoughts on on that on that series as you worked on it? I mean, like you, you, your work on it was amazing. Well, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, uh, it was some of the was some uh, probably my favorite work I've ever heard from you. But like, what do you think of the series as a whole? What were your thoughts as you worked on it? Yeah, if you guys haven't heard of the series, it's called Yuki Yuna is a Hero. It's awesome. And it's it's about five hey guys, girls. Guys, can you shh? Ah. Thank you. It's about five girls, and they, like, fight in some alternate it's dimension Magical thing. girl yeah, stuff. Yeah, magical Just girl say show. That. You Pretty and much. a magical girl thing? I can't imagine. <laughs> but, I mean, it was my first time well, being uh, a magical you? girl, and I loved it. It was fun. So, I, I really liked the show. I think it had, like... It's cutesy moments, and then it had its like really dark, like serious moments. It dealt with like suicide and stuff like that, and like it was it was crazy. But it was so short, you know. Yeah. So I wish there was more to kind of like learn more about the characters. But. Hopefully, I mean, the, I'm not gonna spoil, but the way it ended definitely left room for more. Mm -hmm. for oh, sure. there's gonna be more. <laughs> Maybe not in anime form, but oh, I have a feeling you do realize the way they ended it. They just said Yuki Yuna's chapter end, mm -hmm. but they made a manga. And they're doing a side story. Yeah, they're old. I have a feeling there's going to be some stuff. I don't know if they're going to bring back those girls, but there's going to be some stuff. No. Yeah. If it happens, it happens. Second season of anything, and it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's not at the not, especially with the industry. There's so many studios that come like one week you have this new studio and they're producing awesome stuff, and then the next week they're gone because they have no money. Rest and, in yeah. peace, man. Yeah, mm. Man, I just finished Gangsta, and I'm not Samurai happy Samurai Champ Blue. <laughs> well, thank yeah, you. No. Dude, Gangsta, you. no, Gangsta's one season, and the studio that put it out is gone. Like, there's more manga. If somebody else puts out more, that'd be awesome. I just had to finish it, and I'm like, and what's next? No. Yeah, we're, n I, little hint. I'm in the show, and I did not know that the studio was gone. They told me that this morning. Yeah, like, the studio went under. This is why we don't pirate. It's really like if you need no better reason than Manglobe went down, man. Yep. That's actually that reminded me of kind of a not funny story, but this this girl uh, really wanted to watch an anime that both Sarah and I have been in, uh, Madoka Magica, and she came up to me. She's like, "Oh yes, I heard you were in this show." I said, uh, "Yeah, it's pretty good." She says, "Oh, cool," and, and I'm like, "Well, do you have Netflix?" And she says, "No, but my friend does." I said, "Oh, well, it's all on Netflix. You can go watch it." She says, "No, no, no, that's okay. I can find it anywhere." And I said, I'm going to give you a little piece of advice. And she's like, okay. And I said, don't ever say that to a voice actor. <laughs> don't ever say that. Just don't do that. It's, it's, and she's like, oh, well, how come? I said, because it's illegal. 
I like the people that go on like companies like production companies Facebook pages and like give links oh to God. illegal streams. Wow. Those yeah. those are classy. Yeah, it's it's just not good to do, guys. Just don't do it. You know, <laughs> if you're a real fan, not to say that you're not, but if you are, you're it's okay to spend money. So it's okay. Yeah, I mean that's will probably get something, but like gangster won't. It's so. like people people will go and buy Attack on Titan merch, people in People will buy Attack on Titan DVDs and stuff like that, but they're not buying other shows. They're not getting gangster. They're not buying, like, uh, we didn't, the, to, yeah, Sergeant Frog, Torico, oh. like, all Sergeant these shows. Sergeant Frog's not getting a second season? Sergeant Frog, like, Sergeant Frog has so many other episodes left that we could have dubbed, but nobody in the American market bought the DVDs. Yeah. They, they just, they went and went to YouTube or they went to streaming sites or they went to wherever else that they could find it to watch it, but nobody put money into it. So the Japanese were just like, why should we make more? We even dubbed another season that will never see the light of day because nobody bought it. See, see, here's the thing. I know, I know that there are maybe a couple of you in this room, you're not going to admit it. I know that there are probably some people in there that do pirate stuff and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, I mean, it's just just me. It's, I'm only one person. It's not going to be a huge deal if I, if I pirate stuff. That's where you're wrong. Every single time somebody pirates someone or something, someone, so, don't pirate people. Um, every time that, <laughs> every, every time that happens, it, it does harm every single time. So that's, that's my lecture. We won't lecture guys anymore. Right. But, you know, question. Question. <laughs> so this is probably a very generic question that you guys get all the time, but um, of all the media that you guys do, have you ever gone back, played, and listened to yourself? And yeah. what, you know? Hated it? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I liked it. I hated it. <laughs> it's like, the, like, actually, like, the first, I remember the very first time I ever actually got in the booth, put the headphones on, and then heard myself in a professional quality microphone, I went, oh, God, that's what I sound like? Why am I here? And, and, like, it's, it's really kind of like the first time you hear yourself through headphones or coming out of a TV, like after something that's been it's mixed terrible. and everything, it, it really is. It's, it's very disconcerting. Yeah. You're just kind of like, this doesn't feel right. That's not me. That's not how I sound. But then when they keep bringing you back, that's when you think, oh, I must be doing something right. <laughs> there are also, we've all been in shows that we only see the scenes that we're in and we don't see that, you know, it's a, we're in small roles or whatever, so you don't see anything else and then like years later you end up watching like oh oh that's stupid <laughs> like Why did I, I didn't I do that or, or, or not just your performance or whatever but like the whole storyline you're like oh i thought this was so much cooler than that <laughs> when i thought there have been now i would not name any titles but there are some titles that i thought were going to be this really bad a kind of show and then I, I finally watch it all put together and i'm like oh this doesn't make any sense at all <laughs> tell me later I will tell you later. <laughs> I go back and rewatch a lot of uh, the anime, at least, that I do because I am a perfectionist and I want to like give myself entirely too harsh notes. So like next time, I never screw that up again. Um, as far as video games, I'll go until I, I have a bit of a problem because like okay, so one of my best friends, Rob, he's in he's in Borderlands. I'm gonna play as Rob. I want to hear everything that he did. So yeah, I leave Axton sitting there and I wait for five minutes just so I can hear all those side ones. I go into a boss battle with my friend and I sit around and I run around the sides and the outside just so I can hear all of the taunts back and forth. Because if you just walk in and you snipe that guy right off the bat, you hear none of that battle dialogue. And I found that out. I'm hardcore about that. That being said, as soon as I got Xenoverse, once I got Whis, I quit. That was good. It was good. I actually, I don't go back and listen to my stuff so much, but if I am in a show or a video game with, with friends, then I will, uh, kind of what Rob said, I will go back and watch it to see what else is going on. But it's mainly, it's not really, I mean, of course I like hearing my character because I, I will have liked that character, but the treat for me really is hearing my friends in it because I happen to be a fan of all of, of everybody on this stage. I appreciate their work because they're all immensely talented. You lucky SOPs, you talented SOPs. Uh, they're all incredibly talented, and you know, it's to me, it's equivalent. It really is going to see a friend of yours perform in a play. It really is very equivalent. So, I try and support it as much as I can, and I like going to hear my friends more so than 
myself. So, you know, I, I, I can't wait to hear Erica in this or, oh my gosh, you know, Josh sounds amazing in this. You know, it's just, it's all this stuff that I really just love to hear my friends more so than myself. But then when I hear myself, that's when I kind of go into, all right, hopefully I don't suck. And if I don't like my performance, then it's okay. I, I, I can just kind of skip over that for this one. So, you know. Just blame the director. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like to collect everything that I'm in because I'm an egotistical maniac. Um, for your honesty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. That's the only reason why I'm here. Um, <laughs> re no, seriously. That's why my name's in the program guide and not Ian's, really. But, um, <laughs> no, but I get that there's something where you're like, That's me! I, know, I killed like, that guy! Like a child, like you created this child and you like yeah. must care for and nurture this child that will sit on your shelf for the rest of eternity. Completely but, understand. What do you call your shelf? There's something... Your ego my shelf? ego shelf. Yeah, yeah ego yeah. shelf. Well, that's yeah. one of my yeah. figures. I collect figures of the characters that I play that yeah. have figures. And there's it's there's something scary. cool about you know having been you know grown up a geek or, or whatever, yeah, just being yeah. raised on this stuff to be able to go like, like Saturday night when you're you're just at home chilling, you're like, I want to spend the night watching cartoons or something. Like, I can watch a cartoon where I'm the hero, yeah. and it's that is it's awesome. so cool. It's awesome when you love a role, and and then you're like, oh, Erica, I gotta show you this. I gotta show you this. Like, Josh, what was that role that you were really happy with when you, last time you were in LA and you showed it to me? I don't remember the show. Oh, Femt in Blood Blockade Battlefront, yes. where I essentially just did my Mark Hamill Joker yes. for him, and like, and yeah, you were so, that's and, all and he it's, was. It's one of those brilliant moments where it's like I, I just. I really want to show you this because I like how I sound. And it's, it's awesome. I love it when my friends do that because they're proud of it. They're proud of their performances, and it's awesome. I'm sorry, I cut you off here. It, it was like watching uh, Titan with those two. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite was during, oh, no! I, like, I like freaked out, and I went, huh? And I looked over, and he's like, ah. <laughs> Or what about when he screamed, Ian? Yeah, that was the best, too. I loved your reaction to the scream because it's like... Watching Ian, because uh, he would like he, he didn't want to see any of it beforehand. He waited specifically until Lauren and I were free to be able to, to watch it. And when we got to Ep Five, you know the big moment where you know the teeth Santa Claus, come, te yeah, Santa Claus Titan teeth come down. He's just like, oh, it's gonna happen, isn't it? It's gonna don't, it's gonna happen. Don't you do it? Don't you? Ah, oh, God, he's gone. And then he like <laughs> he turns around and then he hears the scream. And he wasn't looking at the screen when it happened. And all he hear is, Whoa! and he just like. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> and, like, yeah. and, then he, and then he rewound it, and, and, and Jamie in the other room was just like, what is going on in there? Like, McFarlane was there, uh, the director, and he's just like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a Titan party. It was awesome. I'm sorry. You're an is egotistical you maniac. Yeah, do you have something, Sarah? No, it's are you done? Oh, I was going to continue. Continue. Please. Yeah, have at it. Um, but I was going to say, like Josh was saying, just kind of growing up with this stuff and like being a nerd and like seeing yourself in the stuff, like mentioning shows on Toonami, like it was so cool getting to be on Toonami for Kill a Kill. Because I, that's, Toonami is what got me into anime, yep. honestly. Yep. So just being on that. And uh, I watched it all through the Toonami run uh, when Kill a Kill was on it. And then I got to be on Sword Art, which was also on Toonami. But uh, Kill a Kill's on Toonami again. And I watched the first episode after so long of having watched it, and I was just cringing at like everything <laughs> I did because I, I have I'd grown so much throughout that series because it was it wasn't my first lead role but it was my first like like huge like off the charts. It's like what people started to figure out who I was. That Kill a Kill is the reason for that. So just watching that from the beginning again was like whoa, like, I'm so much better than I was. Like, what, oh, gosh, I'm so glad I don't sound like this anymore. I hate pilots. <laughs> First episodes. It's mm -mm. true. It's true, and so many people jump on the pilot saying, this job sucks, blah, blah, blah. It's like, Not hold on, guys. Not even the first <laughs> episode. It's like the first five it takes me to get oh, into yeah. character yeah, sometimes. Definitely. Absolutely. As a director, I would make sure that to, like, try to be uh, so uh, unfriendly and so like cool. We need to be able to get, 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 get yeah, through it. So that way we would go back and redo a lot of the first episode because I personally effing hate first episodes. I'm always like, just start at like episode three. I sound way better at that point. <laughs> but on your on your on your shelf thing, first time you got an action figure. Uh, oh. uh. I played with action figures as a kid. I freaked that. Toriko fought Captain America that morning. <laughs> like it was awesome. Like. There's no sh like <laughs> you do it too. It's yeah. true. Yeah, Sarah, you I'm were done, gonna Sarah, say. Sarah, you can go. Um, 
kind of what they said. I mean, yeah, I'm a nerd. Mostly I, I go to watch to be like, oh, it's out. Okay, how do I do? <laughs> okay, that's all right. I, I accept this. <laughs> Mostly I'm just glad this. it's like I find this acceptable of myself. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I've had, I think I've only had two, mom two moments where I was just like, <laughs> I wanted to do that differently. Well, technically one. One was just like, oh, that was a miscast. They should not have cast me. <laughs> it's like in any other, in a different situation, the voice and the character would have worked, but the, the picture that came along with the character, I was just like, Nope, that was a miscast. Oh, and the other, the other one, I, did, um, I do, um, I do Angelic Buster in Maple Story, and that I loved that role. I love that character, and I'm for the most part very happy with the voice. But there's certain moments, especially since that voice is going off all the time, it skirts that fine line between oh, this character's adorable, and oh my god, I want to punch this character in the face yeah. over and over and over. And I had a certain moment where I'm just like, yeah, if someone wanted to punch me for this, I would not really blame them. <laughs> well, now that you've given me Please permission. Don't. <laughs> At the autograph signings, don't don't punch her. It's not her fault. Well, I love, that, I love Sarah. that character. Oh. Sarah's delicate. She'll fall right over. No. She'll break. She'll break. Anyway, anyway thanks. yes. Thanks for Thank the question. Thank you so man. much. Many thanks. Thank you. We've got five minutes Hello. left. Five, five, five Hello. Minutes. Um, for Sarah William. Yeah. Um, first off, I loved you as Jinx. Jinx is one of my Yay! favorite lead characters. Yay! Applause. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And stop. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. I'm my hands. Anyways, but also, um, I actually really enjoyed you as um, Peacock in Skullgirls. Yay! Uh, what, was it, what, what was it like playing such an over-the-top character and then having to do the anime voice pack for her? I was just glad my anime creds were good enough that I was just like, yeah, I know that reference. I know that <laughs> reference. I know that one. I know that one. Yeah, I got I, Yeah, I know these. It's fine. It's cool. Let's just go. Like, I was just like, yeah, I know that. I was like, man, I got to say hoy. I was like, my car kept her soccer senses are tingling. <laughs> it's like, hoy. It's just like, ah. <laughs> and a goo. I was just like, cannon, yay. Cannon. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Well, we could stare at you for five Do you minutes. Have a question? No, she's just going to take them for comfort. I'm just the moderator. She's the moderator. Fine. She's just the moderator. I have nothing to say to any of you. You're the moderator. Coach. I am. But since we have like three minutes left, I figure you guys can tell the crowd one fun fact about you. Ooh. And then that's all one she wrote. Fun fact. My fun fact is I have no fun facts about me. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, I, I don't know any fun facts. I leave that up to other people. Like, you this is more, what's fun about you. Know you know more about Sailor Moon than anyone that is working on Sailor Moon. That I don't doubt. Nice. Do I really? I don't think so. I, you're the only one that talks to me about it. What about so. Christina? Christina probably knows a lot about it. I never see Christina. Amanda knows a lot. That's true. Does she? Amanda's like huge in the Sailor Moon. That's awesome. <laughs> that's actually, hero. That's, that's, this is going to sound so sad, but that's actually, as, apart from Titan, uh, Sailor Moon was the first one was when I actually started looking for figures of my characters so i've infected everyone you have gross my figure collection is disgusting every time i get a new one i post it online so if you're following me on twitter and so people are nodding their heads like yeah we've seen it <laughs> i've seen i've seen her her ego shelf it's oh yes pretty you've big. seen it in person it's, i have i need to get like an actual display case i've got so many of them yes but yeah. a lot of them are the same characters so i can't like imagine got, why you know the How awesome. many times can you buy Ryuko? A lot, apparently. I have almost all of them. Fun fact about you. Oh, I already did the bop it fact. That's going to be That's the best. really that cool. Is the that's that's really awesome. awesome. We need to go buy a bop. Somebody go buy a bop it. Bring it back and we'll play it. Sarah, fun fact about you. Um, I think I was probably primed for voice acting because my dad made me listen to old time radio shows when I was growing up. Nice. Which was hysterical. I mean, besides the Looney Tunes, he tried to balance out the anime. Um, but my thing is like going and getting my cassette tapes and listening to the Bickersons with Don Amici and Francis Langford and The Shadow with Orson Welles. Well, they always rotated the, the main guy. You know, I uh, listen. That would I go to bed listening to that. If I couldn't sleep, I'd pop in one of my Shadow tapes and be like, I listen to this until I fall asleep. You know, God, I listen to, I listen to a lot of that stuff. Josh. 
My very, the very first role that I ever had as an actor, I was five years old and I played Gollum in a children's theater production of The Hobbit. And I, and, and I never went back. That's when it began. And that's when it began. It's like I never, I never stopped after that. Like it, Do it's it. just ridiculous. That, uh, oh. Do it. Oh, the pearl is nice and cool, so juicy, sweet. Andy Circus got it from me. He did. <laughs> he, totally he did. He totally, totally did not. You like, totally I was five years old just going, <laughs> press the press. And there, was, and there was somebody at your recital going, hey, Andy, yeah, it's your cousin. I found that Gollum sound you've been looking for. Oh, yeah. Happy Back to the Future Day, a belated Back to the Future Day. Was anybody able to get the perfect pets Pepsi before it went out? They sold out. Yeah. So fast. I was thinking to myself, oh, man, maybe I'll grab it. It's like gone in like five minutes. And apparently they were oh, going yeah, for $20 a pop, which is actually funny considering that Doc Brown in the movie gives Marty like a 50 to go buy the one Coke. And so, like, <laughs> it, was, it was true to price. Um, fun fact, I'm trying to go really obscure. Uh, when I was 14, I came up with a Venom costume for my Halloween. Halloween was really big for me because I lived on a historic district street and we'd get about 3,000 trick-or-treaters a year. Wow. You just have to kind of sit outside and throw out candy, so Halloween was really big for me. And I came up with this Venom costume that was like, you know, the, the pullover black mask with the, the, the eyes, but they had the holes cut out. And I only the other day, I was, re I was reading some of the Flash Thompson current Venom, and he's pretty much wearing what I came up with when I was 14 because I had Venom with guns and army pants and the same kind of thing and the same eyes. And yeah, it was a weird thought I had the other night. So, 